I'm Sandra from Cherry Heart with a little podcast extra for you today. It's a Spicier Life Crochet Along special. Yay! So, the blanket that I'll be talking about, or the crochet along that I'm talking about, is this one. I'll show you a bit more later. It's um, called a Spicier Life Crochet Along. Um, I'm running it together with my friends at Black Sheep Wool and um, it kind of follows on from a crochet along that we ran together uh, two years ago called A Spice of Life, um, which you might already know about, you might not, but um, after that we had sort of always talked about the idea of doing a second and so we finally got that organised. So here it is, and it's not just A Spice of Life, it's an even spicier life. So the blanket is called A Spicier Life. <laughs> But before we get into the sort of nitty gritty of it, let's just have a bit of blanket action, shall we? Let's show you the blanket that I made, which is going to be really difficult to fit in. Yeah, if I stand back, maybe. I touched the ceiling, I can't get up high enough to show you. <laughs> there it all is. Whee. I'll put some I'll put some pictures in so you can see it as well. But yeah, I thought it might be quite nice to sort of give you a little show you a little bit of that quickly. I'll talk about it a little bit more when I talk about the colour packs a bit later on because I want to show you the different colour packs and I'll just talk a little bit about how they came about. So the launch of it is on the 19th of September so that is when you can get the introduction which is a, a PDF file that you can download and what that will have is all the information that you need to get yourself ready and get yourself prepared for the crochet along. So it will have information about the blanket uh, the yarn packs in there, the colour packs, it will have um, information about the size and the hooks. I've also done a little sort of, um, I've talked a bit about gauge in there and sort of taking time to just prepare and to make those gauge swatches because this is one of those blankets where it, it uses different patterns. So if you're not careful the gauge can vary as you do different stitches. So um, it's important to take a bit of time to get your uh, swatch sample right but it's also kind of important to make keep making sure that your gauge is on track so there's lots of information on there about how to do that and um, yeah how to keep yourself going on the uh, right lines uh, to make sure you get a really nice blanket at the end so hopefully you'll find that really helpful in there. I've also included a really nice little colour chart um, which shows how the colours will work for the three packs and there's also, so you can you know get your yarn all nice and organised and there's also a little, um, I've put a little space in there to give you room if you're using a different yarn, if you want to you know get creative and use your own colours you can sort of put those on so that you can follow along yarn A, yarn B etc with the pattern so hopefully that will be helpful as well. And then after the introduction part, um, we've got a couple of weeks to give everyone time to sort of get themselves organised, get themselves prepared. And then the blanket parts, the actual pattern parts, will be released. Um, the first one will be the 3rd of October, so that's the Tuesday. And then each part will be on the, follow uh, the Tuesday after that, so they're one week apart. And there's six pattern parts altogether. So it starts on the 3rd of October and the last part will be on the 7th of November. You don't have to worry too much if um, one pattern part a week sounds like it is going to be um, too quick for you really. Um, I mean there's a very big difference in the sort of amount of speed and the amount of time people get to crochet. Some people will whiz through the parts in a day or so and be champing at the bit for the next bit. Other people will struggle to fit it in before the next part is out. And to be honest, that's really not a problem. Um, we found last time that 
it's there's just all sorts some people are quicker some people are in the middle some people are slower and it really doesn't matter because there'll always be someone else who's going at your speed um if you are worried that you're going to be slower and you won't finish in time that's really not a problem just whatever speed you're happy to work at just go with that the pattern isn't going to go anywhere it's not just going to suddenly disappear the facebook group won't suddenly close that support um, will still be there, the pattern will still be available. Um, it's all free, by the way, the pattern. Um, so yeah, I will keep that available. It's The old one is still available, this one will stay available. So please don't have any worries about keeping up or, or you know, doing things as quickly as other people do them. It's completely fine to just take your own path with it. And that's absolutely fine. Some people last time didn't even start until it finished, so they just sort of kept along with the park, downloading the parts as they came out, but just kept them to start afters. Other people started when the last one started and have only just finished. It's absolutely fine. You can just do your own thing. There's no, there's no rules on that whatsoever. So don't worry on that front. And the other date that it might be useful to know about is that I am actually going to be visiting Black Sheep Wolves. That's on the 4th of October. Um, so we've decided to do a little kind of afternoon tea. I thought it'd be quite nice to um, get together. It'll be quite informal, but just sort of to uh, meet up and have a little chat about projects and crochet things. Um, yeah, so I think it's on the Black Sheep's website as an afternoon tea with cherry hearts. So there will be sort of um, some nice little nibbly bits there, some sandwiches and cakes and whatnot. And um, yeah, I'll be there. What a draw, eh? Um, <laughs> but yeah, but it'd be quite nice to sort of bring our crochet along and sort of. I have to remember to take some with me this time. I didn't take any last time. So yeah, I'll take my own crochet along. We can just have a little little crochet and chat together which might be quite nice and um, so there's all the dates you need to know um, some useful links I do sometimes get questions about how you join the crochet along um, and the answer is there's nothing you particularly have to do you know you don't sign up anywhere you don't have to join anything or do anything um, it's more just a case of how much you want to be involved um, as I say, the pattern will be available to download on my blog, so you can find the files there. So you can just download the files and do your own thing. Um, but there is also, if you want to get more involved, you can share what you're up to on social media. So there is a Facebook group which has been run very kindly by the lovely ladies at Black Sheep Wools. They'll be hosting and uh, doing the admin on that side of it. Um, and that's a really, it proved really useful last time. Um, it was quite successful, quite a lot of people joined, which was really nice. But it was great because then people can help each other out, basically. If one person's stuck on a certain part, someone else knows the answer to it. And um, you can just sort of share how, you know, share your blankets, which it's really lovely to sort of see what everyone's doing, see how everyone's getting on with it and see how their progress is going um but it's also quite nice because it has different time zones all around the world these days it's quite nice that you could perhaps ask a question and there might be someone else from your time zone who'd be able to um you know chat chat to you about it whereas not everyone's available all the time so that's really nice to uh, be able to connect that way so if you want to join that um, and get involved in that way you're absolutely welcome to um, and the other thing is we've set up a spicier life uh, tag um, which you can use on Instagram or on your blog posts or wherever and that's um, hashtag spicier life cow so I'll pop that down here so if you want to share your pictures um, anywhere on social media using that tag that would be fantastic um, because I think one of the nicest things last time was just sort of just seeing everyone um, share their blankets and sort of seeing how they're getting on and seeing what colours they've used or um, yeah just seeing what you do with it and seeing all those lovely blankets grow it was, oh, it was the best <laughs> it was really great so yeah if you want to do that this time that would be fabulous 
So the other thing I'm really excited to share with you is the yarn packs we've got for you this time. So um, we've got four packs that will be available through Black Sheep Wools and I've got all the links on, on the blog so that you can go directly through to them depending on which colours appeal to you or which yarn because we've got two different yarns for one of the packs. Um, so yeah, I really hope you like them because yeah, they're kind of quite special to me. It was really fun to work on them and pull them all together and sort of think how different packs would work with the same pattern and how to sort of harmonise the colour with each different pack. So yeah, it was really quite good fun to do. So I hope you like them. But I'll talk a little bit about each one. So first of all, there's the uh, Colourway Jaipur. Now that's available in two different packs. We've got two different types of yarn that you can buy that in, but it's the same colourway as close as possible. So my original, the original blanket that I made is in the Jaipur colourway. That's the one that you see here with me today. And it's the one that I originally uh, used for the design. So I just wanted to talk about this a little bit. This is made in Debbie Bliss Rialto yarn, um, which they're all double knit yarns by the way, all the packs. So, just to sort of show you some of the different colours and things. It feels, I just want to talk a little bit about this yarn because a lot of time blankets are made in acrylic yarn. I make blankets a lot of time in acrylic yarn and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that in my opinion whatsoever. But what is really nice, and it's quite a treat, but what is really nice is to sometimes use something a little bit different. So this Debbie Bliss Rialto is, um, there's quite high merino content to this yarn and it's, it was just so lovely to work with. It's nice and soft, it's got a lovely sort of squidginess to it, it's deliciously warm to cuddle under. It just slides over the hook beautifully, it's, oh, it was just a joy and the colours, I mean I've always liked Debbie Bliss colours so it was just really lovely to use duck eggs, I like this nice peachy colour. Pink, she's got the nicest sort of subtle pinks. Oh, love it. And this this colour as well, which is kind of like a pinky, purpley. Mm. Yeah, so that was fun. So yeah, so what I was going to say, the advantage of the Rialto, apart from just being just a sheer luxury of it really and it being such a treat to work on and a treat to have the finished blanket is that because it's got actual wool content merino it blocks beautifully so where I was saying with the patterns being different it will affect your gauge sometimes some people more than others um, I use the same hook the whole time I, you may need to change to make sure you're getting the right gauge that you need so I had a sort of a maximum amount of that I could my gauge could go to but if I was a little bit under it really wasn't a problem with this because it just blocks out beautifully so I just I've got um, you know I sprayed it all out when I was finished and then it's it's just completely you know completely straight lines absolutely beautifully square and just the drape is so lovely. Yes. So if you're in a position to treat yourself, I really would recommend it. However, um, we're not all in a position to do that, are we? So we wanted to offer a sort of a choice for you so that there was a more luxury option, but also there's something that's a bit more affordable as well. So all the other blanket packs are in my other favourite, favourite yarns, which is Starcraft Special DK. Um, which is an acrylic yarn, but it's, you know, it's a premium acrylic yarn. I think they actually put that on their bull bands now. But I really think it is. It's not like your squeaky, shiny, you know, cheapy yarn bin acrylic. It's a really quality, lovely product. What I've done with the uh, Jaipur version for that is I've matched as close to these colours as I can. Um, it's a pretty good match actually. Now the Starcraft 
range is the special colours. There's so many now. It's getting it's getting really quite good for that. So yeah, I was able to match most of the colours reasonably well. I'm pretty happy with it, I have to say. So um, yeah, so that is another option. That's if you really like these colours, but you want something a bit more affordable, that's definitely a really good option. So the downside of going for that option is just on you don't have such um, flexibility with the blocking whereas this will block out and give you perfectly straight edges the acrylic is a lot harder to block you can steam it and you can make a difference to it so you know if you have little wobbles if you're using it that's really not a cause for concern you can fix that that's fine but you do have to be much more careful about keeping consistent while you're making it because you can block out little wobbles but you you won't be able to fix big sort of swathes in so you just need to just take a little bit more time with that and just make sure you're changing up hook sizes as you need to just to keep that spot on um but the plus side of it is of course it's much more affordable it washes great it you know you can stick it in the tumble dryer and all that so they're both really great options in different ways if you ask me so that's the first colourway, so Jaipur in lovely Rialto and Jaipur in my lovely Special Decay that I like. And then the two other colour packs are, the first one is, which I should say actually a little bit about the inspiration, I wanted to talk a little bit about that. Is So the inspiration is this one, is kind of those um, Indian markets, the Indian bazaars where they sell just all kinds of things you've got all the sort of different color spices the rich colors of the spices you've got sari fabric you've got the beautiful woven carpets you've got just all the fruit and the vegetables and the color and the vibrancy of it and so I really wanted to sort of capture that when I was making this colorway and the sort of market pictures I was seeing there's a really fantastic market at Jaipur with just some of the images of it with all the different things that was um, you know really got the old imagination going so that was the kind of inspiration behind this. So the next colourway is the Taj Mahal colourway. Now I'll have to insert some pictures of this because I haven't got the blanket here. My lovely mummy made up the blanket sample for this one so thank you mummy not that you'll watch but um, I am grateful anyway. So yes, she worked up the colour sample of this one. So um, yeah, that was really nice to see and get her input and see what she thought of the pattern. But um, yeah, so that one was inspired by, um, it's basically kind of sunsets over the Indian Ocean kind of idea, but it all got summed up by this lovely picture I saw sort of at dusk at the Taj Mahal. I was kind of looking for Taj Mahal pictures for that, um, because although the building is white, the light of it makes it look so different and just the sort of serene blue skies behind and that sort of pool of water in front of it, I thought might make some really nice images for that kind of, the colourway that I was kind of um, thinking of. So I yeah, I found this really nice image that really kind of captured it for me. So yeah, we went with Taj Mahal for the name of that one. So it's much more sort of rich golden colours, sort of some warmth from some browns and some um, peaches in there, but also nice real serene cool blues and I was just thinking of the sort of ocean going off into the distance and and some pale colours but also sort of some deep sort of turquoisey colours that you're going to find you know out as the ocean gets deeper and and the sky behind the Taj Mahal darkens. That was the idea of that one. Yeah so that was the inspiration and then this was the colourway. That was the colourway that got created. So that one's in um, Special Decay. So just uh, one version of that, so that's the third pack. And then the fourth pack is called Bollywood. Um, and this one was inspired quite a lot by the um, saris, the sari fabric that I was talking about, which is always in these really beautiful, saturated, vibrant colours, real nice pinks and golds and yellows and sort of... Um, and quite often adorned with sort of really golden sort of um, sequins and 
yeah, really rich, lovely shades. So it was partly that, but then as I was starting to sort of collect together kind of the colourways I was thinking for, it made me think of where I'd seen that particularly before with the saris, is in the sort of Bollywood imagery and the Bollywood films. If you've ever seen, I don't know if you've ever seen, but if you see a clip of them where the ladies are all dancing around in their saris as well, but they all choose these really wonderfully vibrant colours and the sort of posters for it will be really, um, you know, just this riot of colour. So I really wanted to capture that in the third colourway. So it's, um, so it's loads of pinks, lovely fuchsia pinks, paler pinks. I've got really nice vibrant purples in there. I've got a bit of gold in there for that sort of sequin sparkle factor as well. And that was quite nice because I don't really use the sort of purpley ends so much and a lot of the sort of deeper pinks I don't get to use a lot so I kind of was pulling out these colours that I don't always use that much. That was really nice as well. I've got some of the um, nice kind of blues in there as well and that was uh, a lady at Black Sheep Wills made that up and oh it's looking so good. I hope when I go up there I can see it in the flesh because yeah I'm really looking forward to... Uh, seeing that one it's hard you know I've, you plan it all out and do all the sequences and get it all organized but sort of seeing it actually made up in all its glory is it's quite a different thing so that was fun to see yeah so that's my last pack that's bollywood and again that's a starcraft special dk so i really hope you like those and uh, might be inspired to use those in your spice of life blanket that would be lovely um but also you're equally welcome to do your own thing um you know go your own way get creative yourselves with it there's some beautiful beautiful um you know color arrangements last time really really lovely things that people made um yeah so you know you might have a massive stash of some yarn yourself that you'd like to use or you've perhaps got quite a bit of special and want to add to it and or you just really want to put your own stamp on it which you are completely welcome to do as well and um, yeah I look forward to seeing them all I look forward to searching the tag and having a little browse in the uh, group and yeah seeing what you do I'm really looking forward to it I hope you are too um, and thank you for listening to me waffle about it and if you would like to share it with your friends and let them know and rope them in as well even better that would be fab okay thanks then bye